What is going on everybody? Zionic here. And in today's video, we are going to dive into some elite strategies that will greatly increase your victories for Pokemon Go PvP. Now we're going to break down this video um, with battles from the Ferocious Cup as it is the month of November right now. So just as a reference, if you're watching this from the future, um, maybe a couple months out or something like that, this will definitely help you with the Go Battle League, which we will see in 2020, the start of it, because Niantic did announce that. But taking a look at right now for the ferocious cup this is just one way to really help improve your decision making now there are three categories that will determine the outcome of a battle and who can efficiently use these and win these um, will most likely be the winner of the match and that is going to be damage or the pokemon and then it's going to be energy so the energy we gain and the energy we expel with our charge moves and then shield so no surprise there as you guys know from pvpoke.com where you guys can train against incredible AIs. The overall score report tells you the damage, the energy usage, and the shield usage. So it comes down to who can utilize these the most. And the philosophy that I like to have is winning two of three. So what does that mean? Well, with every exchange, we want to look to win of these three categories, two out of three of them. So if we let our lead Pokemon die or go down, we lose the damage, but we want to have one in energy and shields. We are going to go ahead and dive into some battles so you guys can really understand this each situation. And whenever I do battles, I always look to try to win two of three. And overall, it really helps my decision making of when I should shield, when I should not, when to let a Pokemon actually go down, and when to hold my charge moves so that I can use them more efficiently later on in the battle. All right, so getting right into this first battle, we are up against Big B in the Ferocious Cup. We have Umbreon versus Minoon. As you guys know, this lead isn't as great as you think it is against a Minoon because the fact that we don't have Dark Pulse, we're not gonna be able to really win this unless we invest shields. But the thing is, that's just one dimension, right? That is just trying to win the damage or the Pokemon, but we can win in other ways. Firstly, we want to try to get a shield from him because he's going to have to shield um, if he wants to keep himself alive because of Umbreon's bulk. So what we are going to do here is first of all, each time we go for a foul play, we're going to build up to last resort. That does a couple things. First of all, it doesn't allow him to keep track of how much residual energy we have because we're going to be able to get to foul plays quicker and quicker towards the end because it's not um, 0 to 45 energy. So as you see there, we got the shield, which is fantastic. And he did do a discharge. So we are going to now go for another foul play. This is going to get him low. And the fact that we have some residual energy, um, we may be able to get to another foul play so he's opted to use his energy to finish us off so now we've won in two spots we've won by taking out a shield and secondly we made him use his energy this is going to allow us now to bring in biberol biberol can farm him down with water gun now we have residual energy and the fact that his Minoon's off the field, so he's gonna bring in Vaporeon. So what we're gonna do is go straight for Hyper Fang. Remember, he has one shield up, and we're not trying to look to shield bait him right now. We're trying to win on the damage, apply a lot of pressure right here. So we land the Hyper Fang, and because we landed it, his last resort, even if he goes for it right here, won't finish us off, so we're not gonna shield. Remember, we still have Skunk Tank in the back with two shields, so the last resort lands. But then also notice, we get a Surf off. So we're able to actually get to the Surf without needing to use a shield. This is going to put more pressure on him to shield, which it does. So now we switch to a Skunk Tank. Now we can shield this so that we lose in the shielding situation because we absorbed the aqua tail with the shield but then look at how much energy we're going to get we are nearly at a crunch with a shield ready to go versus his last pokemon and it is an umbreon now umbreon being very tanky but if it doesn't have any shields guys we can go sludge bombs all day long and we still have a shield up now 
he's going to do a great job at baiting out our shield because a foul play wouldn't do a lot of damage to us but a last resort will but the thing is we are so far ahead on energy because we over farmed there by bringing in the skunk tank to the vaporeon that we can successfully go for another sludge bomb here so this will get the umbreon very low and then we'll be able to finish off with poison jabs um, so he is going to get a last resort here, but I just want to show you guys that you don't always have to win the Pokemon, right? You can lose lead, you can lose other things, but if you can manage your resources well and mainly energy and holding on to shields, it's going to be huge. So we're going to go back to, um, we're going to go back to where we had, uh, Bibarol versus Vaporeon. Again, we landed the Hyper Fang. He's landing the last resort, but the thing is we know because of simulating that we don't need to put up a shield there. We can let him hit us. So we are able to get to a surf and I pulled up the switch menu if he shielded. If not, I was gonna let Bibarol stay in to get as much water gun damage as possible. But since he shielded, I switched so that I can get energy advantage. You know, I did have to sacrifice a shield for the Aqua Tail. But that is okay because we got so much energy as you guys saw there that his Umbreon in the back had no chance. So that's just one example of a game of it's not so cookie cutter of this Pokemon beats this Pokemon. It's balancing energy, trying to win two out of three when it comes to your decisions and where you can gain advantages um, by over farming with energy or not putting up a shield because you don't need to in that situation with Bibarol. Right, so in game two right here, we are up against Jojo and we have a really bad lead, but that doesn't mean you guys can't win the match. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch into Bibarol. Bibarol does fantastic damage and the longer he stays in this, honestly, the better because we are chunking away at his health while also gaining energy. So now he brings in Vaporeon. We already have a Surf and we're about to be to another Surf. So we're gonna be applying a lot of damage to this Umbreon and hopefully either getting a shield or getting this Umbreon pretty dang low. So again, we're winning. Um, in terms of energy right now, we are very far ahead and we do get a shield from him But the thing is is he's gonna win when it comes to damage, which is fine We brought in Bibarol as the sacrificial swap. So we're gonna let him take us out So we're just gonna try to do as much damage as we can But the goal there was to get a shield because shields are so crucial when it comes to the end game in Pokemon Go PvP battles and now that we're in the Umbreon versus Umbreon mirror, there's nothing we need to shield. There's nothing that can one hit KO us or anything like that. Last Resort is gonna be doing a decent chunk, but as you guys notice, we're so far ahead on health that it doesn't matter if he already if he's beating us to these two last resorts, he's not gonna be able to make up for the difference in health or get a shield from us for it. So we're gonna go ahead and go for last resort here. Um, this will get the Umbreon pretty low But again, we're winning right now in shields and we're winning in health because our Umbreon um, Is higher than his now. He does bring in nine tails and we try to switch but it doesn't work out But this is where we can really take advantage. So Psy Shock coming in We don't have to shield this is not going to do a lot of damage But he is at a sizable amount of health so we want to keep as much HP as we can by farming him down because you notice his charms are going to chunk us pretty low but now we are at a huge um, win when it comes to energy we have beyond a sludge bomb so we lost in terms of shield right there but we won in terms of damage and energy now we can go to town by expelling our energy to do as much damage as we can so we're going to fire off a crunch against the bibberall that's going to do about 50 percent hp and again we're still winning in energy because we're about to get to another crunch this is going to get his last shield um, otherwise he's going to go down so that gets his last shield so we're winning in terms of shields and now he's looking to switch and he does switch but we are able to get off a crunch right here 
So again, taking out the Pokemon, so we're gonna win in damage. And um, yeah, that's just that's just all she wrote right there. So we still have Umbreon in the back. Remember, foul play ready to go. So we can go ahead and shield right here. We kept that shield in the back for us, so the Surf's not gonna do a lot of damage. We've queued up the foul play, and we went ahead and won. So. That is another great example of just because you lose lead doesn't mean you can't win the game. It's definitely going to be closer at the end, but if you can manage your shields correctly and find places to farm. So that was like a crucial point was this point against Ninetales where we brought in the Umbreon versus Umbreon and we wanted him to bait out and lock in his Ninetales, which he did. This set us up so well. Um, now, if I could have switched faster, I would have had more HP, but this set us up so well to use one of the shields that we had saved, again, not using it on Viberall, so that we still have a shield for endgame to set us up to farm so much energy. This is why the poison jab users are so deadly, is if they can lock themselves in against a charm user like that, because now his backline is going to get demolished by the amount of energy we have stored up here. So GG's very well played. All right, so in this next match, we are up against JoJo here. Um, and again, somewhat of a neutral matchup. So we have Umbreon versus Nidoqueen. So um, we're okay with staying in this, but the thing is he bails right away. So what we're going to do is farm a little bit of energy, see what Pokemon it is. And then now we're going to go for Bibarel. Now, you guys may be like, well, you should have brought in something else or kept Umbreon in because Bibarel can beat Nidoqueen. You know, you're right in that situation where Bibarel can beat Nidoqueen. But the thing is, Bibarel can apply a lot of pressure to this Vaporeon and get it to the point where I want to, to be able to farm and the fact that I won't have to use a shield on him. So what we're doing here, going for Hyper Fang, hoping to either get the shield or get him low and it gets him low. So this is perfect for us. Why? He's going to beat us to Aqua Tail and I want him to. I want him to beat us to Aqua Tail. Don't throw up the shield. Thanks, Bibarel. Thank you for doing your job of getting the Vaporeon low, because guess what? We're gonna bring in Skunk Tank now. So, Skunk Tank gonna be able to come in and farm a lot of energy. He will take some damage from these water guns, but not enough to merit the amount of energy that we will get from that. So, here we go. We got Skunk Tank, and remember we have Crunch, and Skunk Tank can beat a Nidoqueen, especially the fact that we have stored energy. So we're going to go ahead and fire off Crunches here. Now, with Nidoqueen, we need to be careful, right? Those ground type moves. So he is going to be firing off a charge move right here. We do have two shields, so this is going to merit putting up a shield. This would one-shot the Skunk Tank. We don't want that to happen. So we put up the shield. Now we see a switch into Bibarel. So what we're going to do right here is again, apply more pressure. So we're going to put another crunch out to do more damage or get his last shield. Then we're going to switch to Umbreon. So, or not get his last shield, get a shield. So we switch to Umbreon. Now in this circumstance, um, remember we have loaded energy from before. So again, doing a great job with our energy efficiency. We are ahead. We're going to be used, landing these foul plays right here. And this is where we need to remember i'm gonna go ahead and pause it remember he had nitto queen in the back right and he used an earth power so likely he built up to earthquake or a little bit beyond and fired off an earth power so in this circumstance whatever biberol fires off cannot one shot umbreon it can't even 50 percent umbreon's health so there's no need to shield what we want to do is keep this critical shield to use against nitto queen because nitto queen's only damage to our team is going to be a charge move and Bibarel is low enough that Umbreon can take him out. Um, so with that being said, no shields are going to be going up with Umbreon. So again, we're holding on to our shield, but we're going to be applying so much pressure with foul plays right here that he is going to need to shield if he wants to stay alive. So what is he going to do? He's going to let his Bibarel go down. Now, remember, like I said, Nidoqueen's only damage comes from the charge moves. But the thing is, is it has to shield in order to get those off. So we're going to go ahead and go for a foul play right here. But remember, we're ahead on energy. And the Nidoqueen has to build up to something pretty beefy in terms of energy to finish us off. So the fact that he is now firing off a charge move, we can use our last shield that we saved to block 
this charge move coming in, the earth power is going to go off. And then we're going to easily get to a foul play to finish off the round. So again, it's just recognizing situations. And the big situation is understanding that we don't need to win the damage right here. We don't need to keep our Umbreon's health up. We don't have to let um we don't have to let Biberol block his surf if that makes sense and win in damage. What we can win is holding on to our shield and making him use his energy. So again, just because the perception of seeing that the Pokemon um, that we're fighting against, we need to shield to keep our Pokemon alive, is not is not always true. You gotta think a step ahead and recognizing that his Nitto Queen in the back is his only chance of winning, and his only chance of winning is landing a charge move, means that we need to save a shield for that. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I hope you guys found it informative, so be sure to smash that like button. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this mindset in terms of trying to win mul multiple um, facets of the game in terms of damage, energy, and shields, looking for opportunities where you can double up on one or win two out of three to come out on top. And just because your Pokemon is going to go down doesn't mean you need to invest a resource to, to save it, if that makes sense, unless it's going to do something so amazing for you. So again, like we saw where versus Minoon, I let the Umbreon gracefully go down because we can bring Bibarol in and farm energy because we want that shield or there at the end Umbreon gets to uh, foul play so quickly with snarl that I can put up the shield to block off the earth power and finish off the Nidoqueen Queen very easily while still having skunk tank in the back just in case so like always thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one